Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about something I am very passionate about in my fishing gear and that is why you should always use braid on your spinning reels. Uh, I believe it helps you catch a ton more fish and it will make more enjoyable days on the water and a lot easier fishing with spinning gear. So we're going to break down four reasons why you need to fish with braid on your spinning reels. You'll never put fluorocarbon or monofilament on after you check out this video, so stay tuned and let's get right into it. So you'll notice on this spinning rod right here, this is my favorite braid that I love to fish. It is 15 pound test suffix 832. You can use 10 pound, you can use 20. That's the range that I like to fish on my spinning reels. I like the 15, it gives me a little bit more durability. Um, if you're fishing some lighter leaders, some clearer water like uh, the St. Lawrence River, Great Lakes, you drop shot a lot, 10 pound might be great. If you fish a lot of docks and other stuff like that, 20 pound might be the way to go. Um, and what you'll notice with this braid is it's lime green. I will only fish the lime green braid. Any other high visibility colors will work as well, uh, which is going to bring us to our first point on why you need to fish braid is because it comes in high visibility colors. So the lime green is an excellent one. Um, I've used white in the past. That works really well. I've used yellow in the past. That one has worked really well, uh, but I just like the lime green. Pretty much personal preference, uh, but find one that you can see really well. Don't buy the low vis green. It's not as good um, for one reason, which is your visibility. Um, if you can find any other color that you can see really well, go ahead and get that. It could be orange, it could be yellow, blue. It does not matter as long as you can see it really well when it lays on the water. Uh, visibility is a huge thing with braid. Uh, it's caught me more fish day in and day out when I'm fishing with braid on my spinning reel using little baits like this. So this is a Ned rig, uh, but I've also used, it works well for any weightless bait, weightless Senkos, um, weightless fluke, any type of thing you're using like that where you don't have any weight to it. What I'll do is I'll cast my bait out there and the first thing you can do is tell when your bait's on the bottom. So it'll even work for like drop shots and stuff like that to help you get more bites. You can watch this line go out and you can see it working its way out while the bait is sinking. And then you'll see it physically lay slack on the water once you know that bait's on the bottom. So a lot of bottom bouncing baits like a Ned Rig, if it's not on the bottom, you're not gonna catch as many fish. So if you can see that this bait's on the bottom at all times, you'll maintain bottom contact much better. You'll catch more fish because of it. The other thing that this high visibility braid allows me to do when I cast a Senko under a dock or something like that, or I'm throwing a weightless Senko up shallow, I can watch that line sink so I know, okay, the bait is sinking or when it's on the bottom. But most importantly, when a bass comes up to that bait and sucks it in, you're not gonna feel it on a weightless bait. You'll feel it if you're holding a Ned rig and you're dragging it on bottom, you'll feel when that bass eats it. But if you throw this out there and your weightless Senko is just going down, you can't feel that Senko, you'll see your line physically jump or you'll see it start to go left or right because a bass has picked that up and is physically carrying the bait. So it'll start pulling the line and while you can see it lay on the water, you'll see that line start to turn or go out faster or jump really fast because that bait vacuumed into that bass's mouth. All of that is a key way to be able to tell when you have a bite, you'll hook more fish because of it. Or you'll be able to, instead of going to reel up and feel if you have a fish on there or you have stretch in your line, um, you'll go to reel up, you already know that fish ate it, you can reel up until you're tight with that fish and get a really good hook set on them and you'll land more fish because of it, you'll set the hook on more fish because you'll know they actually ate it. It's one of my favorite things about this high visibility braid. Um, the, the only reason you need the high visibility one, the other three, you could just use regular braid. If you like to saltwater fish, you like to do other types of fishing, green braid would work, other color braid will work, and these other three benefits are going to help you out as well. So for benefit number two, we kind of touched on a little bit there with no stretch in the braid. You have no stretch here, so you have a direct connection to your bait at all times. You can feel everything. Because you can feel everything, not only are you gonna know, okay, my bait's in some rock or some weeds or whatever, uh, you'll be able to feel for those sweet spots down on the bottom. We did a ton of that this summer, fishing offshore for bass. You would throw this out there with a drop shot with the braid, I'd watch the line go down until it hit the bottom, and then I'd drag my drop shot and I'd say, okay, I can feel that that's a little sandy, and then all of a sudden we'd get into a rock pile or a shell bar, that's where those fish were sitting, and I'd know to fish my bait slower because I could feel it all with the braid. So I'd feel it dragging over the rocks, it would get a little bit more chunky, I'd know to slow down and fish effectively in that area. 
The other thing is when you're fishing bottom bouncing baits like Ned Rig, Shaky Heads, any of that stuff, if you're dragging that along the bottom and a fish hammers that, you're gonna be able to feel that a lot better than if you have monofilament or fluorocarbon that has a little bit of stretch to it. You're gonna know a fish ate it immediately. Um, it will transmit all the way right down through your rod. That braid is super sensitive. It's the most sensitive line you can get. Um, so you're going to be able to feel everything by going to braid, whether you're feeling for something on the bottom or feeling for fish. It's one of my favorite things about braid as well. And the other favorite thing that I love about braid is the versatility of it. So you, I mentioned that I use 15 pound braid on all my spinning reels. Every spinning reel has the exact same thing. They're all 15 pound test on all of my spinning reels. Then what I can do is I can get different size leader spools and not have to get a bunch. I can buy the braid in bulk and save money because it's all the same. Then I can buy smaller leader spools. So in my boat, I'll literally carry six pound, eight pound, 10 pound, 12 pound, whatever pound test I need. And I can put that leader on my rod and be able to use different pound leaders on the same rod. So if I'm fishing and I know I'm fishing a drop shot on Lake Erie, it's very clear water. I can use six pound test. I'll go with the six pound test, I can tie that on there and fish. And then instead of having to take all the line off because I'm done fishing Lake Erie and I'm going to a dock lake where there's a ton of metal poles for this fish to break me off on, I could go to 12 pound, same setup, same line, same everything. I just tie another 10 foot section of fluorocarbon leader on here, save a ton of money. Uh, and you only use short pieces of fluorocarbon, the braid is on there, and then you can go ahead and use 12 pound test or 10 pound test around docks and not break off as much. So I can change my setup on the fly without having to change all the line out on the reel. Um, when it comes to a bait caster, usually I have bait casters specifically for more things. Uh, so I might have a jerkbait rod that I only fish jerkbaits or crankbaits on. I can put 12 pound test fluorocarbon on there because I know it's gonna stay on there for a long period of time and I'll grab a different bait caster for something else. Spinning rods are pretty basic. So I keep a couple different actions of spinning rod. I might have a medium light, a medium, a longer medium for something else. And I'll use the same braid and dictate what I'm gonna do with it based on my leader there. Uh, it's a super easy way, save money, be more versatile on the water, and just ultimately make it easier to change on the fly. And lastly, the one thing that braid does, it allows me to save money and save time on the water and get less tangles while I'm out there. So we talked a little bit about how you can save money by adding fluorocarbon leader. You don't have to take the braid off ever. Um, braid has no memory. So what that means is if this gets all looped up or you cast it out there and it's been sitting on your reel for a while, typically when you throw mono or fluorocarbon, you'll have the coil oils and they don't go away. So you'll have a lot of slack you'll have to pull out of your line before you can do anything. This doesn't have memory. So when you throw it out there, direct connection to your bait, you don't have the coils, you don't have the uh, issues getting tangled or anything like that. Uh, the only thing, little bonus tip for you when you're fishing with braid, to avoid wind knots, you're, you can get wind knots with any type of line monofilament and fluorocarbon get it really bad. It's a huge issue and it tends to tangle up a bunch because it flies off the spool much easier. So if you are fishing and you're fishing a light bait or you're fishing in wind or that line's been on the reel for a while, when you cast it, that flies off the spool and it can get tangled pretty easily. Braid can do that as well. Um, and what I've noticed is it's when there is very uh, light baits that you're fishing with. So weightless Senko is a prime example. When you skip that weightless Senko under a dock, especially if there's a little bit of wind, when you cast, it'll come off the reel. When it comes off the reel, a lot of people, they will close their reel with the, the reel handle. Never do that. This is the bonus tip here for you. Never ever close your reel with the reel handle. That is the easiest way to tangle your line on a spinning reel. What you want to do is make your cast and close the bail manually. Now, when you're fishing a drop shot or something with weight, it will pull the rest of this slack out of your line and manually set it in the uh, roller here. That is the easiest way to maintain no line twists or wind knots. It needs to be in the roller when you close it. So manually close the bail. If you're fishing something with a weight, it's gonna pull that out and it's gonna set itself in there. If not, if you're fishing a weightless Senko, it takes two seconds. You gotta just pay attention to it sometimes. 
you can just manually put that in the roller and start reeling and it won't loop underneath the spool here and get all tangled up. So that's the way that I like to do it. Um, it will keep you from getting line twists. It'll save money. You won't have to change your line as often. Uh, and it's ultimately just a better choice than fluorocarbon or monofilament. I love fishing braid on spinning reels. I have actually completely switched. I don't fish monofilament or fluorocarbon on any of my spinning reels anymore. I just tie a leader on and I'm good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about why you should fish braid on a spinning reel. I'm trying to come up with some ideas over the winter here when I can't get out and fish. If there's anything you'd like to see that I can do indoors, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I can make those videos while we're working through the winter here or until we get to Florida. Like I said, we're gonna be going to Florida at the end of the month. If there's anything you guys would like to see while I'm down there, Leave that in a comment as well. I can make those videos. And if you'd like to see a video talking about the three other kinds of line on top of braid on what you could fish while on your reels and when you should choose each one, check that video out right there. Leave the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.